Time now is 9.30, and we will call the Township Board of Supervisors meeting of August the 9th, uh, 2016, to order. Uh, we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, and if you would, remain standing after that for a brief moment. The Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We here at Mill Creek Township are saddened to announce the, uh, the death of Joe Marshall, a retired police chief here at Mill Creek Township. I have a statement here from uh, Acting Chief or uh, Director of Police, uh, Mike Tesor. Uh, and here's what he has told us, a brief bio about Joe Marshall. Joe Marshall, retired Chief of Police from Mill Creek Township Police Department, passed away on Sunday night at age 89 after experience a decline in health over the past two years. Chief Marshall served from the, in the department from 1956 until 1981 and presided as chief of police for the last 22 years of his career. In doing so, he established professionalism, innovativeness, and a code of conduct which established the foundation of Mill Creek Police Department today. Additionally, Chief Marshall brought our department from a five-man unit in 1959 to a 54-man complement at the time of his retirement in 1981. Finally, a presentation was made to Chief Marshall last year on May the 12th, 2015, and he was titled Chief Emeritus, or always the Chief. Uh, the plaque was presented to Joe at the time and remains on display in the lobby of the police department over here. We will remember him for all of his contributions and wish to express our deepest sympathies to his wife, uh, Loretta, and his other family members, and all his friends and officers here at the Mill Creek Police Department. So if you would uh, join me with a moment of silence for Joe. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our regular agenda. Item number three, public comment on agenda items other than development or rezoning applications. Have any comments? Being none, we'll move on to approval of the minutes. Item number four on the agenda. This would be the minutes of July the 26th meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Item number five is approval of the bills. Any questions we have? Uh, the payment register from the township and then the sewer revenue fund. I'll move to pay the bills. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, uh, item number six is approval of solicitor legal services agreement. I'm gonna turn that over to you, Brian. Uh, as announced at our last meeting a couple weeks ago, uh, with the retirement of Evan Adair, we we're going to be securing the services of the McDonald, Illig, Jones and Britton group. Um, and with that, we have a, uh, an agreement for those legal services. Uh, this is available for uh, public inspection if someone would, would like to take a look at it. We have with us here our Mark Shaw, our new solicitor, who will be uh, sworn in in a minute. And, um, in a nutshell, this uh, provides all of the legal services for the township, absent those for the zoning hearing board or police solicitor. Um, it covers a, a wide range of basic solicitor services. Um, the uh, the uh, fee will not be an hourly, as we uh, discussed at the last meeting. Uh, we will have a basic, basic solicitor services fee of $87,000 per year uh, than there are on top of that special solicitor services should the township need any. So with that, um, if there are no other comments from the, from the board, I would move approval of the agreement for municipal legal services. Okay, do I hear a second on that? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask one, one point of clarification. We, we do currently have um, a fee schedule at McDonald Illig firm for um, other litigation that they're assisting us with. And that's why I clarified Mr. Shaw those fee schedules would be null and void and all of those services would be uh, under this agreement now, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I'll second. 
Okay, with that clarification then, okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, and the reason you're here, Mark. <laughs> Let's go down front here. I don't know if I need the microphone or not. I think it's kind of quiet in here. Probably can hear us right now. Okay, if you would please raise your right hand. I, Mark Shaw, do solemnly swear. I, Mark Shaw, do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth. And that I will discharge the duties. And that I will discharge the duties. Of Solicitor in Mill Creek Township, of Erie Solic County. Of Solicitor of Mill Creek Township in Erie County. With fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the Okay, I guess we can start asking the tough questions then. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, item number eight. Uh, sale of uh, parts, sale of parcel from repository of unsold properties. Mark, I'll turn that over to you. Okay, we received a uh, letter from the Erie County Department of Finance uh, regarding parcel index number 33-053-225.0-0. Zero zero one dot fifty two, also known as fifty thirty five sixty West Twenty Second Street. It's a trailer. They're asking us to uh, forgive township taxes on uh, the trailer for multiple years. The total tax forgiveness is ninety three dollars and fifty eight cents, uh, and we routinely approve these for uh, right. uh, just to get get it back on the rolls. Okay, so your recommendation that we approve this? Yes. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve that? Uh, so moved. Okay, do I hear a second I'll on second. that? Okay, uh, Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I also vote yes. Thank you. Uh, item number nine, six, uh, sidewalk accessibility alterations project phase four, change order number two. Rick Morris. The original contract was awarded Empire Landscaping, Snow, and Construction Services at the May 24th meeting in the amount of $150,112. Change order number two in the amount of $5,200 is necessary since several ramp locations required curbing due to elevation differences that were encountered. A uh, sidewalk had to be lowered to provide a compliant ramp at several locations and adjacent yards resulted or would have resulted in drop-offs without these. Uh, the contractor was also directed to extend the drain and tied into a storm sewer catch basin. Uh, the payment of this change order will be covered under our CDBG Community Development Block Grant funding for the project. So the adjusted contract price was at $151,487 with the inclusion of change order number two in the amount of $5,200. The updated contract price is $156,687 and we recommend approval of change order number two. Okay. Uh, Mr. Morris, that, that yes. total cost is still under what was actually budgeted for the year, correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the board? I'll move approval. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, item number 10, contract time extension request. Uh, once again, back to you, Rick Morris. We have a July 21st letter from Mark Corey that is requesting a contract time extension for the design of the old Steritania Road Bridge replacement project. A uh, contract has been extended in the past for one year at a time by mutual agreement. PennDOT requires approval of the extension by the Board of Supervisors. And as we understand it, Mark is still in the design phase of the project. I recommend approval of the one-year contract extension. Okay. Okay, any questions from the Board? Um, I, I have a general concern about the issue, gentlemen. Um, I'm looking at uh, Mark Corey's letter this will be the, the third extension he's requested. Is that correct, Rick? 
Yes. Um, I, Mr. Corey has done good work for us in the past, but I'm a little concerned that this project is slowing down. It's now been uh, three years, actually almost four years, I think, um, from the initial, from the project being initiated. Um, I'd, I'd like to direct the engineering department to touch base with PennDOT District 1 to get PennDOT's perspective on what the, what the cost for the delays are before we extend the contract. Okay. The, the current contract runs through through when? September 5th? So That's we do correct. have time even if... Okay. That's correct. Yeah. We do have an evening meeting before the contract okay. expires. Okay. Sounds, sounds legitimate. So okay. I'd, I'd move to, to table it until Mr. Okay. Morris has a chance to contact PennDOT. All right. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. And I also vote yes. Okay. Item number 11, communications. Um, Mark, do you have anything? No, I have nothing down there. Brian, you're next. A couple of things. Okay. Um, I have a memo from uh, Mark Wells in the sewer department. Like, like to have permission to send four sewer department employees for pump training on Wednesday, August 17th. We'd like to send <coughs> Keith Lawson, Mark Freitas, Corey Merriman, and Aaron White. Uh, the training will be held at the Summit Township Water Authority from 8 a.m. until 3.30 p.m and we'll cover, we'll cover pump components, hydraulics, and pump installation and maintenance. Uh, the uh, sewer department budget allows for this training and the cost is $85 per trainee or, 30, or $340. Uh, he would also like permission that they be able to use two sewer department vehicles for transportation. And I would move approval of that request. Okay, do I hear a second on that? Um, <clears throat> I'll second. Okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. I, believe, I believe when you comment on that. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that I'm sorry, yeah, that agenda. wasn't on the agenda. Public comment on that action right there, I'm sorry. Being none, okay, now we'll call for a vote. Mr. McGrath, you yes. vote yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. Okay, and I also vote yes on that. Sorry about that. And also uh, from uh, Gary Snyder, our public works director, he would like permission to send Pam Fitzpatrick for front desk safety and security training on August 29th of this year uh, at the Wingate by Wyndham on Old Oliver Road. Uh, the seminar is from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at a cost of $149. There will be no overtime incurred, and I'll move uh, approval of that request. Okay. Do I hear a second on that request? I'll second. Okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple items here from the police department. This comes from Director of Police Mike Tassor. Uh, number one, permission to retro retroactively uh, for the Westridge Fire Department Fire Police to assist McCain Fire Department with traffic control at the McCain Fire Department 75th anniversary parade uh, this past Saturday, August the 6th from 4 until 8 in the borough of McCain, Pennsylvania. Uh, the written request is attached for that. This is retroactive. This was something that came up last minute. Uh, actually, on Friday, I was notified about it, and I gave a verbal on that. So uh, I'm going to send that or uh, present that as a request, uh, a motion to approve that retroactively. Is there a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I just want to clarify. There's no cost to the township when we approve these. That's correct. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah. This is just the authorization for the it's formality. Yes. Yeah, formality. Right. Yeah. Um, I vote yes. Okay. And I also vote yes. Uh, item number two: permission for Corporal Jeffrey Keller and Patrolman Jacob Washek of the MPD to attend a training class entitled "Tactical Shooting" at the uh, PSP Northwest Training Center in Meadville. Uh, the class takes place August 23rd to August 24th at no cost to Mill Creek Township. Put that in the form of a motion to approve that. I'll okay. second it. Okay. Mr. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. And item number three, permission for Patrolman Kevin Gioka of the MPD to, a trend, to attend training class entitled Close Quarter Battle at the PSP Training Center in Meadville. Once again, uh, this class takes place uh, September 13th and 14th. And once again, it is no cost to Mill Creek Township. I put that in the form of a motion. I'll second it. Okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Uh, I would like to make a note here, just for the record, uh, last Wednesday, August 3rd, 
uh, the Mill Creek Township Board of Supervisors did hold an executive session with the members of the Mill Creek Township Sewer Authority. Uh, and this was regards, in regards to an employee integration matter, uh, which is still ongoing. We're uh, not sure where we're at on it yet, but uh, just to let the public know we did have an executive session meeting. So that's all I have. Thank you. John? All right. Uh, well, gentlemen, we've been discussing this for a few meetings now. Um, there's a proposed uh, transportation and land use study on Route 99 or Edinburgh Road, as most folks know it as. Um, this would be a joint study between Mill Creek Township, Summit Township, uh, PennDOT, and the Erie County Department of Planning. Um, we were provided a, a scope of work uh, a number of weeks ago uh, and a cost estimate of about $57,000 for the study. Uh, this was initiated back in February with discussions between us and Summit. Uh, specifically, we were interested in it because we had two pretty substantial developments coming up on Edinburgh Road, uh, just south of Interchange Road. Uh, those two developments have since been, I think, not approved. I think their HOPs have been approved by PennDOT. So really the, the impetus for us being involved in the study is, is really passed. Not that there isn't uh, a rationale for us to be involved. For the, Basically the study would look at transportation conditions and land use patterns along Route 99 from Interchange Road to Hershey Road. Um, you know, traffic flows from Summit to Mill Creek, so it makes sense for us to be involved in the study. My, my concern, though, is, is the cost. Uh, PennDA is proposing that this would be a, a four-way split of the 57000 Our share would be $14,250. I've expressed some concerns to the county regarding the, the, the cost sharing of the effort, uh, primarily because in, uh, within the last two years, PennDOT has funded um, a depot road study in Harbor Creek at 100% state share. They're also currently uh, performing a study for the city of Erie on the Bayfront, 100% state funding. Uh, so I'm a little concerned that um, maybe there's a consistency in how PennDOT is prioritizing funds for these kinds of studies. Um, so uh, today we have to decide if we want to uh, agree to the study. Um, we can agree to fund the 25% if you'd like me to continue trying to negotiate with PennDOT to try and get a lower price for, for our share. I'm, I'm, do you have any questions or discussion? Um, John, do you think contacting our uh, representatives would have any, would they have any input? Would that, that be beneficial, do you think? Would, would they be able to help this process along? I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I've been trying, I've been contacting the county, which is also the MPO staff. Um, They've been trying to negotiate this on our behalf. Um, I haven't spoken directly with Bill Pettit at District 1 yet. That's probably the next step is for us to give Bill a call. Um, so Your I experience know. says that PennDOT has typically picked up the tab? Yes. Okay. But they're looking for almost $15,000 from us? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm not sure how you gentlemen would like, like to proceed. If you want to table this again, then we can continue trying to well, one way or the other, I think it's necessary. Um, we didn't budget it in, in 2016, so the best we could do would be to budget it for 2017. Uh, but I think that in the meantime, if you can work some magic and get PennDOT to agree to pay for it like they typically do, I think that would be very helpful. Okay. Well, yeah, and, uh, and I would agree with that there, too. Uh, of course, I have been kind of quiet about my feelings about PennDOT. I'm not going to use this as a bully pulpit right now to talk about it, but uh, uh, this would be typical of our dealings with PennDOT. Uh, well, this issue, it, it's I'm a state... I'm not happy about it, I can say that. And I think I would appreciate if you did go after them to see if they can fund it. Well, it's a state roadway, and I would argue that Route 99 is a more significant state roadway than Depot Road. Yeah. And it would yeah. <laughs> warrants more state involvement than local involvement, so... Right. I agree. All right, well, then... Um, we don't necessarily need to vote on this. Just no. wanted to more of an update of where we, where we stand. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll reach out to Pennant District One next and see if we can't uh, get them to change their perspective on it. Good. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you have there, John? That's all I got. Mr. Shaw, anything you'd like to say now, or anything? Just uh, I'm happy to be the new solicitor for the township and appreciate the faith that you uh, gentlemen have uh, have in me and in my firm. And I'm 
happy to be aboard. Okay, glad to have you here. Cheryl, do you have anything? Right to know requests or anything? There were no requests for the month of July. Nothing in July. Okay, that's good. That's good there. Okay. Rick Morris, anything? Nothing. Okay. Citizens to be heard. Any citizens that would like to uh, share a thought or two, please come forward. Please. If you would, uh, sir, please uh, state your name for the record and also sign it along with your address there on the clipboard. Thank you. I know I who you are, but I, just for the record, yeah. I'm at a distinct disadvantage. I forgot to put my hearing aids oh, in this morning. Okay. I haven't heard a word that you've said. I've heard voices, but what you've <laughs> said I do not know. Okay. We'll, we'll try to speak up. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Uh, my name is Gino Carlotti. Yes, Mr. Carlotti. I live at 5442 Gardner Drive. And I'm here to talk about the house that has been abandoned at 5450 Gardner Drive, which is right next door to me. Okay. The house is, it, it's unbelievable if you haven't driven by it. Mm -hmm. It was owned by Mrs. Mary Kowalski, mm -hmm. who died in mid-April. She lived there with her son, Gary. He lived there for a few weeks after she died with his girl, he was with his girlfriend. And on Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. they had a yard sale. Mm -hmm. They brought furniture and all the appliances and everything out, put them in the driveway, and had a sale on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. When the sale ended, Gary went off and they live someplace else now, and everything is still in the driveway. This is the second week of August. Mm -hmm. That was Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. The grass has not been cut in three months. Mm -hmm. The hedges and shrubs have not been trimmed for years. Mm -hmm. And there's guys, young men, going in and out of this house during the day and staying at night. There's three important issues here that aren't, that hasn't been addressed and nobody's doing anything about it. One is a safety issue. Mm -hmm. If you were to see these guys who are going in and out of the building, you would lock up your daughters. They're terrible looking people. Mm -hmm. I don't know who they are or what they're doing there. And then there's a health issue. The police have been there a number of times and they've told us that there's a terrible odor in the house. It's in very bad shape. It's flea infested. I mean, I live right next door. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see rats and mice and God knows what coming across the, the, the property. Okay. And a third serious problem is a financial issue. Mm -hmm. I am 84 years old and my wife is 83. One of these days, we're going to be thinking about going to live someplace else in a retirement home or a nursing home. We will never get the value of our house and at, it, at its assessed price with the house next door that is a total disgrace. My question to you, gentlemen, is if this house was next door to you, what would you have done in the last two months? And what can you do now? There must be something you can do to, to make this house presentable. It's destroying the neighborhood and we're worried about it and concerned about it and we would like something done. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carlotti, just after we spoke earlier, I was able to find out that we do have permission to return to the property. As I explained earlier, uh, we tried to uh, gain access to the property, I don't know, two or three weeks ago when the police joined our crews over there and we were unable yes, to. Your police have been there several times. Yes. yes. Um, but I just learned prior to the meeting that we have just uh, recently uh, been given access again to the property so that we are able to send uh, perhaps a contractor or a crews over to uh, remediate the problem, to uh, haul away the garbage and uh, take care of the, the lawn and so forth. Uh, the bank still does not have uh, ownership. It's in the hands of the, uh, the estate, but uh, the estate has given us permission to 
try to remediate the problem. So we'll be acting on that this week. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully this will take care of it, but really the permanent solution won't occur until the bank actually has the property in their possession and can uh, market it. So we're hoping that if and when it is, I'm sure that it will be sold, uh, I'm hoping it will be sold, right. and somebody who buys that is buying what is substantially a good house. That's right. And they can repair it and, and, and get it up to standard and be welcomed by the neighbors. But right now we're very worried about it. Yes. Mr. Kalati, I, I definitely sympathize with what you're referring to there. Uh, in my career before I became a supervisor, I worked in building inspections and code enforcement. This is probably typical of a foreclosure property where somebody just leaves in the middle of the night or just leaves and leaves a mess for the bank and for the neighbors to endure for a short period of time. Uh, and believe me, it never gets corrected quick enough for me too. So I definitely understand your frustration in the matter. Uh, Mr. McGrath indicated that he talked with our code department this morning and that we finally have permission to get on there. You want to be reminded that there are certain legal standards we have to follow. There is a procedure that allows us to get on the property and until that procedure is adhered to, there's really not a lot we can do. And I'm sorry to say that, but there are legal standards that we can be charged with and we don't want to find ourselves in that, that, in that sort of matter. So uh, uh, that's where we're at right now. Please be patient. I know you've been patient a long time here with it. So uh, my heart does go out to you and the rest of your neighbors over there in Gardner and the whole area. Because that is a really nice neighborhood over yes, there. Yes, it is. And the properties yes, have always been well maintained. And I know your property is well maintained there. Uh, so uh, please bear with us if you would, OK? All we right. can give you updates. We can have the code department give you a call or something like that, or give them a call at the code department. So, we'll get on it this week. Yeah. Thank you. Right. I, I, okay. I, I'll come back again to say thank you when it's all done. Okay. And well, I'll we hope come, that's next week. I'll, but, I'll uh, come <laughs> with my hearing aid so I okay. can hear what you're saying. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks you, Mr. Yeah. Carlotti. Okay. Is there anyone else to speak? Comments? Seeing no others, uh, we'll call for adjournment at 9:58. So moved. Okay, we're adjourned. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.